it shouldn't have happened. Uh, we're trying to understand why it happened. In fact, the Chief of Staff, Dennis McDonough, asked the White House Counsel to look into it, to figure out what happened, and to make sure it won't happen again. Will that individual, that station chief, have to leave Afghanistan now because his identity is well known? Well, if you'll understand that I can't comment on the details, but you can rest assured uh, that the security uh, of this person uh, is foremost in our minds and will be taken care of. And, and do you, can you tell us who made the mistake, where the blunder occurred? I can't, and that's exactly uh, why the Chief of Staff, uh, Dennis McDonough, asked our White House Counsel, uh, Neil Eggleston, to look into this, to figure out what happened, and again, to make sure it doesn't happen again. Tony Blinken at the White House interviewed a short time ago on CNN about this outing of the CIA station chief, essentially the top man in Afghanistan. Uh, story came out because it was in a release put out by to the White House press pool and then released after several checks to thousands of journalists on that email list. I was one of them. We're back with our panel. Uh, Steve, how big a deal is this? Well, it's a very big deal, but I'm not sure why you need an investigation. I mean, there are two questions here. Who did it, and why didn't the press office catch it before it was sent out to journalists? I mean, it's a very basic investigation. Why don't we have answers of this by now? It's been 24 hours. Uh, look, it's a very big deal when you out the name of a, of a station chief in the CIA. And, and this from the crowd that said initially, I mean, remember, this was the crowd that came in, and they were going to usher in a new era of competence in government. And instead, what we've seen is what I suspect is, is a careless mistake, but you can't have careless mistakes on matters of, of this importance. I think it will will continue to complicate or add to the complications of the relationship between the Obama administration, the political types in the Obama administration, and the rank and file intelligence officials at the CIA, at DIA, and elsewhere, who are increasingly, I think, concerned about the administration's approach to Al-Qaeda, about its selective use of intelligence, the president's selective use of intelligence, particularly on war on terror issues. And this is not going to, to help uh, those rank and file types feel even more confident in the way the administration handles intelligence. You know, critics AB have pointed to the outing of former spy Valerie Plame, uh, and they're trying to draw a connection there. Britt Hume suggested it's a much, it's apples and oranges. Well, it, look, it's an honest mistake. The person would, no one would want to do this because you're endangering the life of that person and their family. And, um, and it's a serious blunder. Um, that said, uh, it is a serious blow to the competence of this administration coming off of the VA scandal, which is actually still ongoing, and several other scandals involving um, how they run the government. So it's, it's a very big deal. Scott Wilson of the Washington Post is the person that brought to their attention. We have no idea how long this would have gone on, undiscovered, had a journalist not asked the administration why that name was on the list. Well, it said on their station chief. Right. So anybody who works in the press. But also goes the investigation the investigation is an automatic response to this administration. They put something under investigation immediately so right. it can't be talked about. Right. I can't talk about it because it's under investigation as the usual. And of course, but this is the one time when they honestly were able to say that they had learned about it in the press, from the press, because <laughs> nobody in the government actually saw it. Look, I think the the comparison with the Plame case in the Bush administration is important. Because that was another case where it was an inadvertent. It was Richard Armitage, who was actually a critic of the Iraq war. He was unintentional. He was not trying to out or hurt anybody. The prosecutor knew about that. And yet he pursued this with millions of dollars until he got a scalp, a scooter, a Libby, uh, and helped sort of destroy his career. And everybody on the left felt wonderful about this. And the media played this story up relentlessly. Forests were felled to provide the, the paper for all the stories on this terrible leak. And she was a desk officer in Virginia. This guy is the station chief in a war zone. And I can assure you all that, the fake umbrage and the fake shock about uh, that, that we saw in the plane case is not going to uh, reoccur here. It was a mistake. It does show the incompetence, sort of the adolescent incompetence administration. This is a mistake so elementary that you don't expect it to be done, you know, at a, at a level infinitely lower, but at the White House level, and that nobody had caught it on the second time around. And remember, the list went out to 6,000 journalists, <clears throat> including non-American ones. And it, it is the kind of thing you'd think could happen in the first six months of administration, but not the sixth year. It's, it's late for these kinds of mistakes. To yeah, this is not Harry Truman's NSC. This is not Eisenhower's NSC or, or White House advisors. This is really many, many steps down. 
and you think it, it hurts the overall interaction between intelligence and the White yeah, House. Yeah, I don't believe that this will likely have wide political implications that the nation is going to be in uproar over the fact that this person's name was leaked. I do think that it will have those kind of consequences within the intelligence bureaucracy where there's already, I think, great skepticism of the kinds of things that the president has been saying, particularly about al-Qaeda and the, the administration's treatment of the intelligence community more broadly. And that could really have, have uh, real consequences for the president, for the White House. That is it for the panel. But stay tuned for a new spin on the term ladies' men.